Hey folks, Dan Freer here, The Rate Update. Uh, today I wanna to talk to those out there that are looking to buy a home, especially for the first time, they've never went through the process. A lot of people are gonna say, it's a complete nightmare. Others are gonna be like, eh, you know, no big deal. Many are just confused. My son just bought a home, um, and if it wasn't for me, I, you know, I asked him, I said, what would you do? And he said, well, I'd just Google it. Well, that's probably not the best way to do it, but if you don't know, um, you don't know. So I wanted to go over um, just kind of the step by step by step process of what to do if you're in that you know you're in that stage of life and you're like you know I, it, it's time for me to buy a home. Uh, so what now? So that's what we're going to talk about. Credit score do you need? How much money do you need down? What kind of income are you looking at? What kind of program do you need? You probably have no idea on the, all those questions that I just asked you. If you don't, that's fine. That's why I'm trying to put this together to educate you. Hopefully you use me. There's still some states that I'm not even licensed in. But you can still reach out to me and maybe I know somebody there that we can guide you to. So the biggest piece of this puzzle, you're gonna need three pieces, is a, a mortgage person, unless you're blessed to have the cash, a good realtor, good attorney. So let, we're gonna get to that in a minute. So let's go through credit. What kind of credit scores do you need? Well, there's three repositories. There's TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Some people know that, some people don't. You have over 32 to 36 different credit scores. I can almost assure you, you didn't know that part of the equation. Which one is used? Okay, great question, but I'm gonna simplify it. Let's say you have the three repositories. There's TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. We take the middle score numerically, okay? So if you have a 760, a 740, and a 720, we use 740, okay? The middle score numerically. What's needed to qualify for a loan? Great question. 600 is the minimum score right now uh, that's needed even to get an FHA loan, okay? So you need a 600 credit score. Dan, how about have a 580, a 590, we'd be more than happy to try to help you with that. Maybe set you up with some credit counseling, review your credit, at least kind of put you on the road or path to get there. But let's just, we're gonna skip through that process right now. Let's say for example, you have a 700 credit score. You're golden, okay? The next piece of the puzzle is, how much do I need as a down payment? A lot of times people think they need 20% down. Okay, that years ago, that was what was required. So you're buying a $100,000 home, you need 20,000 bucks. Today's completely different market. There's what we call DPAs, and we have them all over the country. They're down payment assistance programs. They, they can help you, it's either a grant or a loan that's used for your down payment. So for example, let's say you need $5,000 for a down payment, we can, we'll work with you, and we actually have access to these programs, we do it for you. It's not that you have to go out and find these, we do it for you. Okay, so most of the down payment, let's, let's exclude that right now, down payment assistance. Let's just go over the programs that are out there to help those get a mortgage, excluding the down payment assistance. How much money do you need for these specific programs? Well. We deal with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. We deal with them directly. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, you might have heard of them. You might not have heard of them. They're the two entities out there that basically do 90% of the mortgages in the whole country. It doesn't matter if you come to me or any other entity out there, mortgage company, Quicken, Wells Fargo, Guaranteed Rate, uh, Rocket Mortgage, US Bank, Wells Fargo, we all use the same pieces. We all use Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Again, you might have heard of one or both of them. They have exclusive programs that we have access to that can allow first time home buyers get into a home with 3% down, three. So you're buying a $100,000 home, I wonder if I can get you into that for 3,000 bucks. Awesome, okay? So if you're, in a, if you're a veteran, God bless you, thanks for what you did or doing, 0% down. VA loans have 100% financing. USDA, no it's not a farm, uh, if you're in a rural part of America, and we do a lot of them, you can get a USDA loan with no money down. Zero, 100% financing. If you go with our specialty Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac programs for the first time home buyers, 3% down, okay? Then the next program that would be available to you is FHA. FHA requires 3.5% down. So basically we have programs that gives you all of the money that you need, 
If for some reason you just don't qualify for that, we have for veterans 0% down all the way to FHA at 3.5% down. Did you notice I didn't say 20% anywhere? I didn't say 5%. I didn't say 10%. I said three, 0 to 3.5%. Okay, so that should take off the table. I need $30,000 to buy a house? No, you don't need that much money. So we went over the credit. We went over your down payment. Now what program, I just went through a whole slew of programs, what program is perfect for you? I don't know. It's customized to every client. Here's what's frustrating to me is when I have a client come to me and they're using XYZ company, and I'm like, why did they put you into that program? But I don't know. And then when I break down the whole thing, they're like, God, I wish I would have called you first because I spent a lot of time and effort with them and it just came back. It's like, this doesn't make any sense. It either cost you too much money, the fees were too high, they had uh, mortgage insurance and other pieces of the puzzle that was just too much. It didn't make sense for your situation. So there's a whole slew of programs out there. That's what we do. If you call in, um, you know, I have over 10,000 subscribers to my channel right now. If you call in, you might get me, you might not. Don't fret if you don't get me. I review every file. I know the client, their credit scores, what program we're putting into. I'm assisting in locking in the rate, picking the program, checking the fees. I go through all of this in the background. Um, that's what I do. So I'd love to put you in the right program um, that fits your needs. So it's not cookie cutter. It's not one size fits all. It's specifically to your needs. So what do we do now? So you, you, you decide you want to buy a house. Now you talk to us and we go through all this stuff. Now the thing you have to do is you're approved. And here's what I hate is I don't want to approve you for the maximum you can afford today. Why? Well, I always ask you, what are you comfortable paying? You don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. So you're comfortable paying X. Let's stick with that. A lot of lenders will go back, I got you pre-approved for $300,000, the payment's 3,000 bucks a month, and you're sitting there, that'd be awesome, but holy, if, I, if the furnace broke, I'm not gonna have a nickel to pay to get it fixed. If my car breaks down, I, I, I'm out of luck, I got no money. Let's not make you house poor. Let's fit you into a budget that you're comfortable with. So we know the programs now and everything that you qualify for. Now we determine, or between us, we're like, okay, what are you comfortable affording? And let's stick at that. Maybe go a, a sliver over. But I just had a friend of mine call me. They're selling their house because they're having twins. And he's like, there's no way I can do this. You know, I can't afford this. I'm living in a location that isn't preferred for children. Um, so I need to get out, so now what? So you don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. So let's, and let's stick with it. Okay, that's the next step. Um, then now you're pre-approved, we know our budget. Now, how do we find a house? Well, we find a realtor. You can find them, I'd love to help you. We have hundreds of realtors throughout the country that we work with. Um, here's, what I, here's what I would look for. A very experienced realtor, one that's full-time and one that knows your area, the area you're looking to buy in. Okay, no disrespect, or you know, if you're a newbie out there and you're part-time, I'm not, you know, this isn't a bash to you. I'm saying in my ideal world, I want a full-time realtor that has been doing it. It's a negotiation process. Yes, you helped me find this house, but now I'm relying on you to negotiate to get me the best price possible. For those out there that never bought a home, they're like, well, why don't I just go into realtor.com or Zillow and find a house that way? You can, but just so you know, you do not pay the realtor. You're not paying the realtor anything. The realtor is getting paid by the person selling the home. So pick and choose. If you could pick Michael Jordan or some guy that just you know dabbles and plays on weekends and somebody else is paying the cost who are you picking so i'll leave it at that uh, okay so now so now we found the house we went with this realtor they did a fantastic job we narrowed it down we want this house okay now it's up to your realtor to negotiate on your behalf the best possible Basically, the best price if we if we can maybe have them pick up some uh, closing cost credits for you or something. So now you need them to negotiate on your behalf. You want 
somebody that's negotiated a thousand times, not once. Okay. Um, so now they go and negotiate. Now it comes back and you guys decide at an X price. Awesome. Now, the, not even halfway there yet. Okay. So the next piece of the puzzle is we take that signed contract, we give it to the, your attorney. We can help you with that as well. An attorney is going to have about five days to review everything, just to make sure the terms are in your favor and swayed to the other side. Also during that time, I would highly recommend you get a home inspection. Okay, there's going to be a person that goes through that house with, and going through it with a fine tooth comb and saying, do the light switches work? Is the furnace working? Is the furnace cracked in the ductwork? Is the, you know, all this stuff, they'll go in the attic. They're going to check your gutters. They're going to check all the plumbing. You know, you see the cosmetic part. It's like, oh, that's nice carpet. Cabinets are really nice. Behind the cabinets, is there mold and the water's leaking down the walls? You don't know. Um, so that's what we want to find out. Is it up to... So we don't want you to, you know, month into it, the furnace goes out, there's three, 4,000 bucks. The, the uh, roof starts leaking, there's $15,000. And your air conditioner just popped. You just spent $20,000 more that you don't have. Okay, so that's why a home inspection is more than worth the money that you're going to pay uh, to have that done. Okay, so now those pieces of the puzzle come into play. The attorney likes the, the contract, the house passes inspection, now what? Now we really start going full force. We have about 30 to 40 day, 45 days to close on your loan. What I mean by closing is the day that everybody sits at the table, you, the sellers, the attorneys, the realtors, we're signing the documents, we're, you're getting the loan, we're giving that money to the seller and you get the keys. That's where we want to be. Here's what happens a lot of times though. On, when you're buying the house, you're busy. I get it. But we need pay stubs, bank statements, um, homeowners insurance, this, that, tax returns, all this stuff from you. You put it off. I know life is busy. Well, tonight I have a kid's soccer game. Can't get it to you tonight. Tomorrow night we're going out of town for the weekend. I won't be back till Monday. Then Monday comes and, oh, you know, I'm trying to catch up at work. I have overtime to, to do. Now we just lost a whole week of getting your information in that's needed to get your loan approved. If you delay up front, you're going to be delayed at the end. It's not my fault at that point. We rush as quick as we can to get all this stuff done, but if I don't have the documentation from you that I need, we basically are, are stagnant. We're sitting there waiting on stuff from you. Most cases when we did your pre-approval at the beginning, we have all this stuff, but a lot of things might need updated. So that's that part of it. So please work with us, not against us. We're on your side. We want to get you into this house. We, Everybody has spent a lot of time and effort to get to this point. We want to get you to the final step to at the closing. So we need your help in cooperating with us to get these things. I'm not asking of you anything that's not being, that's not truly needed in the loan process to get your loan closed. Um, and we'll work with you and working with the realtors, letting everybody you know, know updates and all this stuff, what's going on. Cause it's a tedious process. It's going to be, it's going to weigh on your nerves a little bit for the next 30 to 45 days, but it's well worth it. Um, so that is about it in a nutshell on how you walk through uh, the process of buying your first home. So if we could be of help, I, I hope you like the video. If you do, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell so every time we do post a video, you get an alert. And uh, But if we can be of any help to you, please reach out to us. Best way to get us is the 800 number. It's 844-775-LOAN. That's 844-775-5626 or uh, go to our website, therateupdate.com. So therateupdate.com. If you'd like to reach me uh, personally via email, my email is pretty darn simple. My name is Dan Frio. So my email address is D for Dan Frio, which is F-R-I-O at preferredrate.com. Thanks for watching. Take care.